Amen. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter <clears throat> Zagrevich, and I'm joined today by, by a very, very special guest, Tom McLaughlin from Canada. Welcome, Tom, to this broadcast. It's uh, so good to see you today. And for, um, would you greet the people, Tom? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I was just sharing it so my wife and everybody else could see. Thank you. Lord bless you. Thank you for having me here. It's uh, different being on this side of the camera and generally on the other side. Mm -hmm. So uh, I pray that uh, we have a good sharing and uh, the Lord just move mightily through the people who are watching. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the privilege of just being able to speak freely about the gospel. Amen. And for those of you that uh, have not met Brother Tom, uh, he is in Canada, up in oh. Alberta, in Calgary, uh, and uh, Brother Tom uh, does a lot of the background work with regards to these broadcasts as far as the technical issues and posting them on YouTube and other places, and we're so, so thankful to him. He does that for our ministry as Brother Tony Abrams' ministry, and we're so thankful to you and uh, Bev for your involvement in this ministry. And um, we want to uh, just express our appreciation to you. We know it's a little colder up in Canada. <laughs> than, um, I guess because we're going to be on with you today, we got snow just uh, a few miles away from us here. And uh, our power went out. So I'm running, we're running on backup power here. But I think we're good. It's not oh. that cold. It's only minus 31. <laughs> And that's Celsius, right? Well, who cares? It's cold. <laughs> what is that cold? It's Celsius or Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's I'm in denial of Hawaii cold. there. Yeah. That is, I think, a lot colder than my freezer. So uh, for those <laughs> that can't imagine the cold, just stick your hand in the freezer, and it's even colder than that. <laughs> yes. Well, praise God. It's good to, to uh, be with you, uh, Tom, and uh, live from Canada and uh, up here in California on a rainy uh, uh, day with a power outage. But Jesus Christ is Lord, and we're going to have a blast here. Uh, so Amen. get on your phone, text, uh, call, do whatever you've got to do. Get your friends on here right now and press that little share button share so that your yeah. friends could join us and also receive the blessing of the Lord during this broadcast. Well, Brother Tom, I know that uh, the Lord has laid a few things on your heart and we want you to share that. We've got prayer needs that have come in and uh, folks, if you want to write in your uh, prayer needs right now, uh, please do so. We have received some before the broadcast, so we're going to bring bring those before the Lord. But uh, whether we get them during the broadcast or between the broadcast, we still pray for you. So feel free to write us, and not just the knees, also write us your testimonies. We've heard some powerful testimonies of people that have been uh, healed, been encouraged, have been blessed, and uh, it was a, a blessing to see um, uh, some folks at a family gathering, extended family on uh, Susan's uh, husband's side, and this uh, uh, over Christmas, and how many of them came up to us saying, we watched the broadcast, such a blessing to us, and uh, uh, praise God. Well, we're glad you're watching. We're glad you've joined us. And uh, Brother Tom, um, it's so good to have you there. It looks like you're in Hawaii, but not quite. <laughs> yeah, only 3,000 miles away or something. That's um, all, just 3,000 miles. <laughs> yes, amen. Uh, thank you for, again, like I was mentioning, the privilege of that. And, and now it's, um, when you ask the, to share, like say, it's different being on this side. Uh, I get a, it's a blessing to listen to the sharings of the word from the different ministries that you have on here. And also the, the thing that was on my heart that I believe the Lord put on is about hope. You know, this, the season uh, that God has given us hope. And that's the thing that we have. That a lot of people don't have. And it's not a hope like, you know, I hope I win the lottery. You buy a lottery ticket. It's a deeper hope. It's a hope and a trust that this will come true. God is true to his word. He's faithful to his word. So that's the one thing I, if I could say one thing to take out of this uh, today from my side is what's kept me going all these years is the hope and the knowledge that uh, I do have a loving father, not this one that wants to beat me all the time. Um, I hate to say it, but like I say, um, 
when I was younger, I didn't have a father. I grew up fatherless. And so I never got the concept of a father being a authority figure and a comforting figure. I always got one as somebody who would beat you. And a certain religion I was in too, that's the way they work. They basically beat you into submission. And so when I got it saved, when I asked Jesus into my heart and to forgive me and, and to cleanse me and get rid of all this old stuff, it was that hope that I have a new life. I have, I have a hope. I have a hope that I'll make it to heaven. See, the olden days, the old way, you had to work your way into heaven. You had to do this. You had to do that. And, you know, you got little brownie points and all that stuff. And did I say enough prayers this morning? And it's always that condemnation. But when I got the light of the of the of Christ in my heart, when I got the reality of the hope that yeah, I can make it to heaven simply by loving and obeying what I see in the word. And God is a loving God. He's not one that will condemn you and beat you. That's the enemy. And that's where we get all screwed up with this stuff here. So basically, you know, the, the Corinthians chapter, I think everybody knows this one, faith, hope, and love, and all this stuff. Hope's in there, you know, like uh, it's not this usual hope that uh was it first Corinthians 13. 13 i got almost i almost got memorized after all these years you think i i was just talking before we started that i'm so used to using the bible now we go on to the to the phones and stuff and i forget what page it's on now so um but yeah the hope we have is uh, like they say um basically now bides faith and hope and love and the greatest these are loves so everybody says cool that's you know love is the greatest thing yeah don't forget the other two and there is a scriptural hope we hope based on the god's faithfulness and love to us. It's not a hope, like I was mentioning, that, well, we'll just throw some money at the lottery, and if we win, we win. That's that's a fleshly hope, but we have this deeper hope based on what we know that God's love towards us. I mean, we all know the John 3, 16, where God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes on him shall be saved. So that's the hope we have, that God will say what he did. And so that's the one thing I wanted to share with you that way, uh, the hope. I mean, I've got more verses, but I'm trying to throw uh, back a bit here. You know, uh, uh, Tom, there's something very important uh, about hope. We talk, for example, as evangelists, we talk a lot about faith, and yet hope precedes faith. That's right. Uh, faith, hope is, you yeah, would faith not is hope. have faith without first having hope. So when you or I share a testimony of what God did in our lives, for example, what we're doing is we're giving people hope mm -hmm. that God can do and will do in their lives what he did in our lives. For example, you share a testimony how God saved you. Well, that person hearing uh, that uh, testimony gets hope that God can also save them and hope precedes faith. Hope is very important. Very important. And uh, Christ is our only hope. You know, when everything goes awry in the world, we yeah. know that we still have hope in Jesus Christ. But going back to faith and hope and love, they're all important. And we can, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, what we need to remember as Christians is that we are to walk a balanced life in exactly. Christ. And sometimes we'll uh, latch on to an aberration. Well, I shouldn't say an aberration, but to one area and create an one aberration yeah. by um, overemphasizing either That's right. faith or love or hope, but they're all important, all they're all equally important. And we need all three, just like uh, the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, power love, love, and a sound, sound mind. mind, all three. It's not just one. Power without love becomes a dictatorship. Um, love without some parameters can become sloppy and, and, and messy, yeah. and it's not God's intent. Um, so he gave us power, love, and a sound mind. So he gave us reason. He gave us wisdom to mm -hmm. know what to do with the power and how to apply the love. So there yeah. is that balance. And I think you're bringing a very important point out here about hope because we don't talk about hope no. Um, enough, and yet uh, there are many people uh, right now struggling around that. the world, and we're going to be yeah. praying. And what is it? They, they lack hope. Uh, is that what you're trying to say? That's exactly right. Uh, thank you. Um, exactly right. Because I, 
from a faith background, the faith churches, and, you know, we, we have a hyper faith out there that I don't believe is scriptural. It's just the, you know, they rightfully, they call this names, blab it and grab it, name and, but there's this, there's the balance to it. There is that we have to have the faith. We have to, well, first off, like you mentioned, we have to have the hope, a hope in what? A hope that somebody is true to what they say. If I, if I said, I was going to give you this as a gift, right. you, based on knowing me, hope in the sense that yeah he's going to do that and faith is the one that says i'll grab onto that hope that i know tom will give me it and it'll come to fruition now the other thing is like you mentioned the balance faith works by love and that's what we a lot of us left out of it and a lot of wounded christians i was one too you know you always did the, the extreme way of doing it and nothing worked because we were trying to do it in ourselves see a hope is trusting in somebody else um, I like my wife has uh, um, the complete Jewish Bible version, and they use the word trust instead of the word faith because faith is so thrown around these days. But uh, in the sense of uh, with uh, trusting in the Lord, that means a, a personal relationship with that. And we'll be praying for people at the end here that have not this hope, you know, this there's got to be hope out there because why, why do we even exist? You know, there's got to be hope, something we can grab onto. And I always like to say, grab the Bible, open up and just say, Father, God, show me something in the word that I can grab onto. That's your hope. And your faith is what makes it work. Now, of course, the love is the biggest one of all. He loved you. He gave you this stuff. And so that's one of the things is I want to share um, that we put our hope in it. So yeah, to me, um, like I was like, say, I was asking, well, what do you want me to share, Lord? And I said, you know, there's not a lot of stuff about hope, because we kind of poo poo that, you know, that's, that's not really great faith. Well, still, it has to be there. So I want to give the people listening that there is a hope in Jesus. There is a hope. There is something more than just, I hope it works. You know, the old expression, I hope it works. Well, that's kind of like throwing out a fishing rod and, you know, line and hoping there's some fish in the water. No, you got to know that you will get something from that. And that's the hope that there is a promise there for you, specifically for you, because God's not a respecter of persons. He loves us all. And so he will give you this hope, but you need something to grab onto. And that's the thing. And then from that, your faith that he, it's a gift, by the way, too, he will make this come to pass. It's just that we need to believe that there is somebody behind that somebody, God, Father God, that gives us something that makes it real to us. And that is where our hope, our faith, and our love works from that. Because again, you know, we get so legalistic and this is the way we do it. God God doesn't work like in a box. He does it because the way he knows how he made you. And so that's where it is. Um, God is faithful. That's the one thing we have to place our hope on. Uh, I have a whole bunch of verses, but I, I don't think I'll overwhelm you guys. But yeah, like Psalms, if, you, if you're in a desperate need right now, and I know I was there these dark times, especially even right now in Christmas the time, you know, everybody's all got families and COVID has kind of separated a lot of us. We have this loneliness now. You're not alone. You're not alone. There is that hope. We have the hope that we know that God is with us. Here, even when we're going through Zoom in here online, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there. Now, he's there with you by yourself, but he's there with us right now. He is here right Father, you're here with us right now. Glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's just, just the blessing we have. So we have this hope that God will never leave us nor forsake us. God will not beat us. He will always will give us a way out of our trials. I have, you know, like say there's other verses, um, but that's, you know, like say my suggestion for those who are having a hard time right now is open up your Bible, you know, dust it off, maybe open up your Bible or your tablet, and then just say, Lord, you know, give me a, a verse to look at, or, you know, even just Google something like God's love or hope. That's what I did because I got tired of flipping through the pages. I, I'm going to cheat here and I go through Google and there's all the whole verses. And I said, yeah, that's the one I want to see. So yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> It, it takes it takes a tech guy to 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 figure this out how to find all the verses on hope. <laughs> Praise God, you know, uh, Tom. What you said is so important. You mentioned how your wife Bev um, uh, will uh, uh, will look into the Jewish translation yeah, version of it, yeah, uh, or, um, of of the Bible and. Uh, and, and, and the word trust is used in lieu of faith in, in passages. And of course, faith is a trust in God. That's exactly the same word. That yeah. What God said 
is true that what God said he will do, he will do. And, um, but, but also, like you said, sometimes we get religious or, or maybe um, that could be the right word. And sometimes it's not the right word. Sometimes I think that's we pretty close. limit God. We yeah, limit, God limit God and we try put him to in the box. put him in a certain box or a, and we say, well, God works this way and that's the only way he works. And then he jumps out of that box and we get all frustrated because that's not the way we thought it was going to happen. But that goes back to the coming of Jesus the first time to this world. Jesus came and um, the religious leaders of his time who were searching the scriptures, who knew the scriptures. And when Herod uh, had asked them, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They knew, I mean, there were, that it was supposed to be in Bethlehem. So they had a knowledge and yet when Christ appeared, and I mean, you have these kings coming in probably with armies of, uh, uh, because kings don't travel alone. Yeah, they go by you know, themselves. They probably yeah, had yeah. an entourage, uh, not just of servants and helpers, but they probably had some sort of security, soldiers, probably security, a few hundred yeah. soldiers each. So they come into Jerusalem and Jerusalem gets troubled by the presence of these people. What's going on here? Yeah. Herod is uh, threatened. He's w wondering yeah. what's going on. And so, uh, and yet, even all of the, though all of these things transpire and, and the angels see the vision of the, or, or the, the, the revelation of the, uh, I'm sorry, the shepherds see the angels and all of these events happen and yet, the Jewish leaders of that time um, uh, did not accept Jesus as the Messiah because they did not expect him to come in the form or in the way that he came. They were anticipating a political leader yep. and that he did not fulfill at that time. There will come the time when Jesus Christ will reign on this earth yes, in yeah. the millennium. But, but at that moment, because of that, uh, they, of, of the parameters that they place on how God was going to do this, even though they read the scriptures, they quote unquote believe the scriptures and yet when God in the flesh appeared, they rejected him. And we have to be careful that in our lives, when God answers prayer, and if it does not come in the form that we anticipated yeah. or were hoping for, that we don't reject the answer of God. Uh, uh, Would you agree with that? Oh, totally, totally. Like to say, that's where I think a lot of us if I can say the word missed God in the sense we missed his divine will in our lives because we have our preconceived way of doing it. Yes, that's a very good point, actually. Thank you. Yeah, our hope has to be placed in the unfailing love of Christ, but also in God's eternal will, like, you know, the, our Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's one of the things we have to know what is the Father's will. And that comes by a personal relationships with not going, you know, it's not just a ritualism, but it's a personal relationship with, with the Father through Jesus, you know, because I am the way, the truth, and life. That's what Jesus said. And no man comes unto the Father, but by me. Maybe that's why you're not getting answers to prayers because you're going the wrong direction. Lift Jesus up. That's the big one. And exactly that is that they were expecting some what they hoped for. Now, that was a fleshly hope. You know, that was something that they thought, not with the hope of the promise that there would be a Savior born to die for us. That's why to take our sins and to rise again. And like, you know, Brother uh, Walter has mentioned, come again. And that is a, another hope we have is that Christ is coming back to establish the proper way. Why doesn't he do it right away? Obviously, it's it's God's will that that we have to work it out in our hearts, who to trust, who to believe. Yeah, the hope and the the Jeremiah. That's one verse I want to share with you. I was going to have little flashcards. Maybe if you if you give me back again, maybe I'll do that next time. But Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I have plan. I know for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, to not to harm you, to give you hope, and a future. 
And that's the thing that will get us going to the next day. We know that this is going to get better because Romans 8, 28, that other verse there, we know that all things work out to them that are basically called, but also love God. And I really screwed that verse there, that to love them and being called according to them. So that's the hope I have, that I know that this thing uh, we had, you know, we call them trials. You know, there's things that you know, there's, there's, you have to realize that there's also an enemy out there. There's also Satan, the devil out there to, to, to short change or short circuit God's promises in your life. And we have to be watching for that. And so we can't just sit here. We have to also have our hope, but our hope creates faith, of course, because faith is what the hope, faith is the substance of things hope for, right? And so we have to know it's a warfare. So we have to know that everything will work out because God promised that in Romans 8, 28, if you want to write that down, the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. I mean, read before and after to get the context, but that's the hope I have when sometimes some things happen. We had some financial stuff. We had some physical stuff. Right now we're having a physical trial and we, but we have to have the hope that God is true to his word. And that's the secret behind that. Yeah, exactly. If you put your hope in the wrong thing, like the Pharisees were expecting some big king coming in, riding on a horse and da, 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 you know, take over everything. And he came as a babe in a manger. Like, that's not a, yeah, that's God's plan. That's his will. God's not into showboating. That's the other thing I learned over the years is God is always the strong, quiet one, if I had to say it that way. But that's the only way I can explain God in my heart is that I know I listen for that small voice, not all the noise out there. And so one of them is that hope that we have. But exactly, that was a very good point. We have to make sure that we're looking at the right thing. And that comes from a relationship with the Lord, reading your Bible, I'm to that effect. Amen. Well, Brother Tom, there are people um, that may be watching who have um, lost hope or who, have, yeah. who feel lonely right now. And um, we who have family and friends and, and God together and celebrated Christmas, um, we're rejoicing. But there are those that may have been stranded yeah. at home, uh, no one uh, visiting them. And, um, and, and they seem to, uh, you know, they turn on the TV and, and, and there's all this negative uh, yeah. stuff out That's there. That's the first thing. Term. They, they, they can turn, they can uh, lose the hope that God is giving them simply yeah. because they get their eyes off of the Lord and put yeah. their eyes on the circumstances and, and because they are maybe alone and no one there to encourage them uh, when they need encouragement right now. But can we pray for those people right now? Brother Tom, yeah. would you pray for those people sure, definitely. That, that are going through these kind of things, maybe in depression, maybe just uh, uh, sensing loneliness or having lost hope? And we want them to have hope because Christ is our hope. And, mm -hmm. uh, and would you pray for them, Brother sure. Tom, please? Sure. Just again, I like to hang my hat on a verse, Hebrews 10, 23. Let's hold fast to that hope that he's given us. We profess because God, he is faithful. Mm -hmm. So yes, Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, I pray for the people who are listening right now. Lord, the, the people without hope, the people who are, are stranded, the, the people, just, just the things in the world, the cares are overwhelming us. We have to have somebody, and that's Jesus. Father, I pray that the revelation of Christ comes in their heart. I pray that the darkness spreads from their eyes, and they see what is the true light, what is the true way, what is the true truth. That's Jesus. I know myself when I was in dire straits way back about 40 years ago, I just stood up and said, God, I can't do this anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm a failure. And something like I, things came off my eyes like scales, and I looked around me, and, and I could see what the Bible said now, and this, oh, I pray that this, this, this scaling off the eyes, this darkness parting in their, in their lives, their hearts, Father, I pray, and I speak in the name of Jesus, Lord, that these things part, like you part of the Red Sea, you part these things from, and that the people can see that there is a hope, there's a hope in Christ, and he is faithful to perform that before we do that, Lord, I speak against the darkness in people's lives, and I speak the hope, uh, we, 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 we rebuke the works of the enemy, and we bring in the light of the gospel. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray these things over the people who are listening. And I thank you, Lord, that we have this hope that we can hang on to in your precious name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, Tom, that that is so important, and thank you for praying for those out there. And brother Tom, maybe uh, there's people there. I mean, there are people that uh, may have tuned in, some live, some will tune in later uh, mm -hmm. because of time differences, differences where yeah. people watch us. But uh, someone may not know Jesus as their Savior. Right. Would you address that? Sure. Uh, uh, just share how you came to the Lord if you feel led to do yeah, that. But, no, sure. But a... would, would you uh, then pray for those people Definitely. that may want to receive Jesus? Thank you, we Father. We hope that they all want to receive Jesus. Yeah. No, definitely on that point. Um, again, why do we receive? Is because we have a need. And the Bible says, and I was just joking before uh, we started with, with Brother Walter that, you know, when I was reading my Bible, uh, I was reading John 3.16. It says that God so loved the world that whosoever uh, believes on him will have eternal life, right? And I kind of paraphrasing it. But I got saved on the opposite column. You can still see it's highlighted in my Bible. And I don't know, maybe God does different things with me. But I was under John 3, verse 3, that Jesus said unto Nicodemus, which was a top Pharisee back then, asking all these religious questions. And he says, you must be born again. And I know that slang has been thrown wrong around and misused, but let's just go. That's what it says in the Bible. So let's just stick with it. You must be born again. So what does that mean? That means something that's changed within us. We're in Corinthians, we're a new creation. We're, where the old man has gone away and the new man is created. That, that's that hope we have that I can have a better life. And you can. And I, I'm the proof. I'm the living proof of that. And I know my family and all that is you can have a better life based on the hope of God's promise that you must be born again. And like I say, it's not something to hit you down with, but that's just a, one of the ways to crack that part the clouds like when i was praying i saw like a, a fog around people like a dark fog and i prayed and i can see them splitting and you can see straight ahead clearly that's the hope of the gospel that's what our faith will be put into to go with that so yes you must be born again that's just there's no argument with that right so that's the first one and then after that we know and like it'd be nice if it's all like two or three verses but god has different people speak these things to give more emphasis and like in romans it says uh because if you confess jesus this is romans 10 9 and 10 i should give the verses if you want to look this up romans 10 9 and 10 chapter 10 9 10 if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god's raised him from the dead yeah i'm cheating reading off my notes here uh, you'll be saved and for the heart believes and the mouth confesses. And so that is how you're justified. Everybody believes that they're, well, not everybody, of course, you know, but let's just keep it simple. A lot of people believe that there's a God out there. I used to believe God was out there somewhere around Jupiter or Saturn out there. And he really didn't care about me. And like, I mean, who am I? I still do. Who am I? Really? But that's the thing is that he wanted to talk to me, that small still voice. And you were saying about the testimony, just really quick, um, like say, May the Lord does different things with me. Everybody goes over here. I'm over here somewhere. But I was driving. Uh, I had a, I was going out with a Christian girl at the time. And she says, you got to be born again. I said, well, yeah, I was baptized as a kid. So I, I'm safe. Don't worry about me. And uh, but something in the back of my mind, that small little, are you really? Are you really saved? I thought, well, whatever, you know, and so I was driving to catch a plane in Edmonton, which is like three hours away, and uh, there's this big hailstorm came out of nowhere and just basically pulverized the car, the thunder, the lightning. I thought, wow, and uh, I had this Winnebago in front of me, so I was following him because that's all I could see about 10 feet in front of me because I had to catch a plane, and in the midst of all that noise, a little voice says, do you really want to receive me? Do you really want to be saved? Do you really want to be set free? Well, who's going to say no? You know, but I'm thinking like I'm driving and, and a lightning bolt hit and all, or, or over the hill. And the um, what do you call it? The percussion from the, the bolt I thought would cave in my windshield. I thought, okay, I think God's trying to talk to me. <laughs> but in the midst of all that was a small voice. Confess me as, as your Lord confess your sins to receive me. It's an action of faith. I mean, it's, and that's what I did as I was driving along in this message. Yes, God, I really believe that you are. Forgive me for all I've done. And, and um, I forget what all I said, but I was just like, basically, okay, I, I think I get the point now. I got to ask Jesus into my heart to forgive me. And that's what Romans 10, 9, 10 says. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, even believing is just this thing up here. And that's not going to get you into heaven. I mean, the devil believes that there's God because obviously they talked, right? It's something a little bit further that we have this hope 
we have this knowledge that if we ask Jesus, that we will be born again. And that's what I was doing was driving along. And it says, I receive you, I, Jesus, come in my heart, forgive me my sins, wash me with your blood, because that's why he was on the cross and shed all the blood. And from that, I did, you know, it wasn't like a big spiritual thing happening. It was just like, oh, well, that's cool. But I thought, you know, the clouds would part and the angels would be in the harps and all that stuff. And then another lightning bolt hit and it got like, yeah, I really meant it, Lord. <laughs> and so just from that, you know, God has, he uses me for the comedy relief in, in some sermons, I guess. But uh, so basically that made it sure that, yeah, I did mean that. I did confess with my mouth. And that's how simple it is. You know, I was taught we had to do all these steps. We had to pray to all these different people who I have no idea who they were. They probably wouldn't know me, you know, all these special people out there. And so, uh, you know, I, I, that's the way I was brought up is that I was not good enough. I could never, never reach that point. But now with the simplicity of Christ, that I must be born again, well, let's go for it. I mean, why not? You want to step in front of the train or get out of the train? I don't want to go to hell. And so that's why I said, I confess with my mouth, Jesus, your Lord, come into my heart. He has, he's a gentleman. He's not going to barge in. He knocks on the door. What do people do? They knock and they wait for an answer before they open the door or you let them in. That's what Jesus is doing. He's knocking on your heart right now. <laughs> Start crying. Because that's exactly what happened to me. And all that noise, that small, still voice, there's a hope for you if you're born again. And like I say, Romans 10, 9, and 10, we have to do something on our side. You know, normally when somebody gives you a present, what do you say? Thank you. Well, that's basically the Christian way of doing it. Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for setting me free. And then that's it. And then we see throughout the books of Acts, that's basically how it happened is that whenever they prayed, they said, repent, 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 and you'll be baptized. By the way, there's more to Christianity than just saying, oh, come into my heart, Jesus. There's water baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit. I know people argue with that and say, well, that's their time. Hey, put it this way. This is what I did. Remember, I came from religious teaching that this is all done away with, and we have to pray all these certain people, and that, you know, do these certain things, and we'll make it into heaven if we're lucky. Otherwise, we've got to go into a holding tank for a while, but somebody else prays for us, right? So, you know that word. So, in that sense that... Uh, Basically, the thing was, is that we have to believe that God says, yes, I receive your offering. Now, it has to be from, now, when we say heart, that's not your beating thing. That's you, you, the person saying, Jesus, I want to know, I want this hope. That, let's say it this way. I want this hope that Tom's talking about. That's how simple it is. And I, I remember when I, like I say, when I was dating this Christian girl, uh, she said, that's the way it is. And I thought, it can't be that easy you know, because we're taught we have to do all this stuff. And I mean, I feel like I'm cheating. If I, you know, it's like Monopoly, you know, pass the jail card. You know, if you get that one, well, that's not cheating. It's just, you got the hope that you don't have to go to jail card and Monopoly. And so with that, um, we see in Romans that, uh, that God will fill you with all joy and peace, Romans 15, 13. So, you know, the, these are good. Like you say, if you're new and you want to get into this hope, like say, receive Jesus into your heart, be born again. And like say, start maybe the Gospel of John would be a good one to start with, or Romans, like I've been quoting Romans quite a bit there, that God fill you with all joy and hope and peace and all that stuff. Like, why not? <laughs> That's why I say people say, well, I don't need to be, because well, I thought I didn't have to be baptized because I was baptized as a baby. But uh, no, I saw it in the Bible. And I thought, well, why not? Why not? That's the question I ask people when they sometimes get into this, they want to argue with me. That way you can tell the heart's not ready. But I say, why not? You know, if I want to give you a gift, why not? Sure. Hey, if that's in the Bible, that's why I said to Lori, if it's in the Bible, I want it. And, and so that's, a, that's the hope I have is that, yes, I'm going to receive all these things. You know, if I can dumb it down for Tom, I like simple. Let's, because Christmas now and the gifts, yeah, I hope I get this new iPhone. You know, like how first world problems, right? Whatever. It's so sad. But anyways, you know, I hope I get that. That's a fleshly hope. But because the thing is, we may not get it, right? I might get socks or underwear like come on but you know that's the thing we have to have something a little bit deeper than that and that's the hope we have in christ that he i mean we are playing with your future so it's not i know i'm making a little bit of levity of it because sometimes 
you see a lot of ministers, they look like they're baptized in prune juice. They're just like all this seriousness. No, this is a joy that God's promised us. And sorry, I got you going, Walter, right on. <laughs> but no, I don't make light of it, but it is a freedom and it is a joy. And there's something that's in here that nobody can take from you. You want that, then you can get it right now. And I'm going to pray. We're going to lead you through like we call the sinner's type prayer. And I'll probably do it my way. But uh, the thing is, is that, are you ready? You have to check yourself. Well, yes, I want this hope. I want this freedom. I want this truth. See, I, I really got into the Bible because I wanted the truth. I started seeing things in the Bible, like you must be born again. Like, how come they never told me this stuff? And I, we used to study the Bible in class in the school I went to. And I just never, I says, well, I feel kind of ripped off. I thought, well, that's in the Bible. How come they never told me? And so I started reading more and more and the things expounded. And every time I started with the word. I say, Holy Spirit, show me your, you know, show me the word because the Holy, don't forget the third, the triune, they're all three of them. And so that's what I prayed for. So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to pray that the scales come off your eyes, that you receive Christ. And if you want to follow with me, and I mean, there's no set prayer. Like I tried looking for the word in the, in the ones in the Bible, do this, you know, step one, step two. No, 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 no. It's from the heart and whatever way you speak. Okay, so let's just do it together here. And then like say, Brother Walter, I don't know if you want to share or I'll just go ahead with it. No, go ahead. Uh, okay. Absolutely. We want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus. Uh, you may feel like there's no hope for you. You may feel like uh, there's no salvation for you. You may feel like you're too far gone, but let me tell you, you're not too far gone. You, you may think you just happened to be on uh, watching this broadcast by accident. It is not by accident. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit drew you here, and you may think it's a coincidence, but it is not. Mm -hmm. God wanted you to hear this message of hope, and he, more than that, he wants to save you. He wants to transform your life. He wants you to personally experience this hope of eternal life and, and receive the eternal life that Jesus Christ offers. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am yeah, the, the life. life. He is all of that and more. And um, uh, we're, we're celebrating Christmas. Uh, to some people, it's just a materialistic holiday. But the reason we celebrate Christmas is because of the fact that Jesus represented or is God incarnate, God taking on the form of flesh, God loving us so much that he gave his best. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus. So you and I could also be children of God. So you and I could experience that uh, salvation that Jesus Christ offers us. And so, uh, uh, Tom, go ahead and lead okay. people in, in a prayer receiving uh, Christ. If you are that person that uh, uh, that maybe you've got religion, maybe you've been baptized as a baby, maybe you were baptized as an adult, but you walked away from the Lord, yeah. or maybe it was just a religious thing you did, but you never truly committed your life to Jesus. Yeah. We're talking about surrendering your life to Jesus and receiving this new life that Jesus Christ offers. Tom, please go ahead and, yeah. and lead people in a prayer uh, receiving Christ. Amen. I like to close my eyes so this way it gets away of all the, yes. the things. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So we like like the like the let me just second there. Again, Jesus said this is how you pray. Now we turn that into a prayer that our Father, but there is a certain way we acknowledge that God is God, and then we want his will done in our life. And his will is you be saved. You be born again. The saved word, the born again, I know it's thrown around, but it's in the Bible, so we have to think it must mean what it says. Saved from what? Saved from eternal damnation, a separation from God, darkness. The stuff you feel like right now, some people call it a living hell. God is willing to take you but you have to ask. Remember, he said, ask and receive. It's not that it's automatically done. It's just the way God, because that's our heart calling out to God. So sorry, I, I was going to go in prayer, but I just felt in my heart that, yes. you know, we need to just acknowledge that Father is God. 
And I call him father now that I never had one, but now I call my heavenly father and not just a G-O-D out there. Like there's a lot of little ones floating around, but the main, the big capital, the big one, I want to be on the winning team. And so I like that. So heavenly father, just like you say in your word, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, I thank you for the grace you've given us. You've given uh, brother Walter, brother me, uh, Tom, how to share these things, father. And I pray that this seed becomes a reality in people's lives. Like you showed me earlier the separating of the fog the cloud lord i pray that you uh, have the people right now look to themselves and say jesus i need this hope so let's just stay and say remember i said in your heart you believe in romans it says that and out of your mouth you confess it so let's pray together dear heavenly father i pray that what i heard i pray that this revelation this hope that you will give me will come to pass father i confess i'm a sinner because i gotta admit i screwed up so i confess i'm a sinner lord and i want you to take this and you died on that cross you, you shed your blood for me it wasn't just to die but it was the shedding the blood that purchase our salvation remission of sins so father wash me clean it's just like basically wash me clean wash clean the sins of my life the hopelessness the 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 sadness the things wash the hurts away from me father on that cross you bore all that yes it was sin but it was also the hurts and the result of sin father wash me clean from all this stuff now i receive you as my lord and savior if you want to say master i receive you now father into my heart as a gift i don't accept it but i receive it because it's something special for me only i receive this into my heart lord and you're going to set me free i believe that you died and i believe that not only you died but you rose again to justify that you were the perfect sacrifice and that you are coming again. So I speak right now, sorry if I'm going too fast. I speak right now that Jesus come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, wash me, cleanse, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me all the benefits of this life, this new life. I'm a new creation. Father, come into my heart right now, forgive my sins and give me a new life. I receive this and I pray for it. And it says, whatsoever you ask in my name, Jesus said this, whatsoever you ask my name, I will do it. So we say in the name of Jesus, I receive you, Lord, into my life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Like I say, I'm not good at religious prayers. That's what I was driving the car. And I says, I believe, yeah, I receive you, Lord. I've, you know, so he, I was, I didn't have time to do this religious thing because there's lightning and hailstorms and I had to catch a plane. So I'm driving in this and that's why I said, I receive you. I believe. Yes, I do. And okay, we're the angels. Believe you receive. And you know, something came off of me. It was like a, a release. And then life just, it was like, it was a blessing. And that's why I pray for you. So yes, like I was just mentioning, I'm not good at religious prayers. So I just say, you know, ask Jesus into your heart from yourself. Ask him. He's a gentleman. Like I say, he will not barge in. The Holy Spirit is gentle, right? Didn't Jesus say, again, maybe you don't know this in the Bible, but it says that Jesus, I have to leave so that the comforter may come. That's the Holy Spirit. And so we have to have that acknowledgement in this. And basically, if, if you say you're giving permission to God to come into your life and I mean, if that's not love, I mean, the God of this universe that created everything who could just like that, you know, and he won't do anything until you allow him to, man, that's love. That's love. So I pray this love for you as well. Amen. Amen. Sorry if I get carried away. Uh, <laughs> if you've received Jesus as savior right now, yeah. do three things every day. Talk to God. And like Tom has said, it's not a religious prayer. Prayer, just talk from your heart. Prayer is talking with God. That's right. And you don't yeah. know how to start. Say, say something simple like, good morning, Lord, help me today. And each time you'll have more and more of a conversation with him. Allow him to speak into your life by reading his word, the Bible. Don't know where to start? I suggest go to the fourth book in the New Testament, the gospel according to John. And there you will learn more about the love of Jesus. And number three, begin to tell others that you are a follower of <laughs> Jesus Christ and find a Bible preaching, Bible believing church where you can grow in your faith. It's very, very important to have fellowship with other believers, to have accountability 
and to have instruction so that you can grow in Jesus Christ. You can't find a church, write us. We'll try to locate one nearest you and uh, let us know what Christ has done in your life. Uh, um, uh, Tom, um, we want to pray for some needs and then we want to pray for Canada. Uh, yes. We know that you are, of course, in Canada and we have been praying for America. We have been praying mm -hmm. for Canada. We've been praying for many nations of the world. Yeah. And uh, But we want to just uh, stop and pray Pray for some needs of healing. Um, we've gotten prayer requests from different ones. Uh, uh, Warren Marcus, who's a film director, also a writer. Uh, he's the one that uh, has uh, produced uh, a lot of the uh, um, uh, film for uh, uh, shows like uh, uh, like Sid Rott. And, oh, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he... Uh, um, uh, he's got jaundice. He's, um, he was mm. uh, last, uh, I, we heard from him. He was in emergency waiting to be seen. So we want to pray for brother Warren Marcus. Uh, we want to pray for John D. I won't give the last name yeah. here locally. He's got a serious, uh, issue with his feet that just swell up. The doctors can't seem to find, uh, um, they don't oh. even know what it is. Uh, Could be the heart, um, yeah. there is a very, uh, uh, um, his feet swell and look like lobsters. You know, now he's got wounds in the feet that mm. we're praying for God to heal and also uh, needs healing of the prostate. So we, yeah. we want to pray for them. Uh, the Mironowski family who uh, watch this broadcast quite often and uh, pray with us. They were just recently ministering in Mexico and their daughter came down with COVID as mm. did uh, uh, Brother Peter and um and 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 a daughter's husband so um we're going to pray and believe for their healing and um, there are others out there we don't may not know specifically yeah. at the moment what their need is but um, as the lord leads us let's pray i'm just going to lead out in prayer and i want you to continue as the lord leads you because there are needs out there um and, and the lord may place a particular need on on your heart to pray for but father we come to you in the name that is above every name the Amen. name of jesus, jesus. christ and Amen. in that name we send your word to brother uh, warren right now touch yeah. him and heal yeah. him and lord we oh, command that john is to be healed yeah. and we speak yeah. healing over his body right mm -hmm. now in the name of jesus lord we oh. send your word to brother john here locally who's got these the swollen Our feet Father, and in the name Father, of Father. jesus christ we command Father. his Father. autoimmune Father. system to be healed Amen. we command Father. those he uh, wounds to heal up yeah. and lord we speak healing into those feet that burning cessation mm. to stop oh, and lord we pray for healing of that enlarged prostate in the yes, name father, of jesus, jesus christ yeah, lord yeah, uh, we father. lift up the minonoski mm. family peter mm. uh, his daughter and mm. husband and lord in the name of jesus we know mm. that uh, that name the name of jesus is higher mm. than any disease yes, than jesus, any yeah. sickness than any jesus, problem man. and we yeah. declare the lordship of Jesus Christ over Jesus their Christ. lives and we pray for healing in Jesus name we command every trace of that diabolical virus to leave their Jesus. bodies and healing to come forth from your hands oh Jesus. God we pray that your resurrection power oh, would infuse them right now expelling you, every Father. trace of the disease and causing healing and strength in their Father. lungs and their oh, heart and their bodies and cause their antibodies to, uh, cells to be strong and to fight off every attack on their bodies in Jesus you, name and Lord not only for them but others who may be struggling with the same or similar conditions we send your word there is no distance in prayer heal deliver save in jesus name we pray amen and amen, amen. brother tom amen. would you pray as the amen. lord you? for that one brother the the feet swelling and the tingling that sounds like diabetes i don't know if he's been 
um, check for that, but yeah, that's no, uh, okay. Anyways, Father, again, like, yeah, I agree with Brother Walter, and that's the promise, that's the hope we have, that two are, are gathered my name are there, and if we agree on one thing, touching anything, it shall be done. This is the hope we have, and I agree with Brother Walter on on, on these things, on the, on the brother as a film worker, and, and the, the brother with the feet, which um, sounds like uh, like maybe a diabetes uh, a shock. Um, Father, we pray that the revelation to the ministering people, the doctors, whatever they that they see what it is, not just guess. And Lord, I pray that the, the healing, that's the hope we have, that Jesus not only died on the cross, but he had the stripes, the, the woundings he has, Father. By his stripes, we are healed, First Peter says that. Yes. Lord, we pray that these healings, this, the healings of children's bread, so that's why we receive you into our lives, Lord. So we pray healing over these people uh, in Jesus' name. I pray for, yes, the people that are listening to that, that they that the hope is in not deferred, but the hope will become more reality in their lives, that God is the God of promises, and he's a faithful God. So I pray again, I agree with these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You want to do the nations? Oh, God. I'm sorry. You want yes, to do the we want yeah. to pray for Canada. Mm -hmm. And as we pray for Canada and America, pray for your nation we know we've had uh, brother schwartz watching from honduras we've got uh, uh mm -hmm. folks that watch us in ukraine and uh slava bohol did i say that right and, yes and russia and uh, germany and uh, uh Excellent. israel and here of course in the u.s and canada and mexico so um uh, but cuba pray for yeah. your nation as we yes. pray for our nations pray for your nation but uh, america needs revival canada needs revival yeah we're cousins and, so it's basically yeah i'm sorry <laughs> we're co sorry yeah we're cousins so basically yes. yeah um do you want me to do it and then you do it? Or? Please, absolutely. Okay. Well, obviously, I pray. I believe that's the you know the theme is this for the country you're from. So I'm going to play for Cam America, like we are so intertwined. It's I mean we are totally polar. Like we're 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 shy and conservative and polite, which whatever a. And then we have Americans, obviously the leaders, the type A, and we're like the type B personality. But we're going to pray for that. And in my heart, then brother. Brother Walton, I know Paul's in my heart. Uh, Hungary's in my heart. Uh, I'll pray for those countries. Of course, uh, Cuba, the, the, the oppression they're having down there. And, you know, I wish we could do all the countries, so we kind of group them together. But those ones are specifically to me. So I'll, I'll lead off on those. And then, uh, yes. and Brother Walter. You... As, as we pray for Nepal, Brother uh, Deepak, who, who mm. we work with there, he's... Uh, heading over to India in mm. uh, in just a few days to uh, hold youth conferences there. Oh, wow. He asked for prayer. Uh, but we want to lift up uh, Nepal. We want to lift up India and, uh, yeah. and of course, China and Russia and Ukraine. Yes, definitely. And, Russia uh, and but, Ukraine. But pray as the Lord leads you, Brother okay. Tom. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this privilege to stand in the gap between the people in need and your request that they that they can receive you and that they can come through and like we're praying for canada and the u.s father our countries are so deep in in this political correctness and this this social mentality they don't know the freedoms that we had i've been behind the iron curtain in such that way so i pray so your ups is kicking in is it but anyways father i pray that uh pray for can the u.s father there be a revival uh, uh the parting of the the darkness that's over overcome our lamb right now lands have right now i pray that the the politicians get a conviction in their heart to see this as well i think we're gonna get punted off here brother walter's uh uh ups's battery is kicking in but we pray for again let's keep doing before we get cut off Lord, I pray for these nations that can the U.S. to be a light to the world, and not only just us, but the other people, like Nepal. We pray for Brother Deepak as he goes into India, that the, the Holy Spirit, the anointing come upon him and release it to the youth there. All oh, the youth of today, Father, they're so confused by all the different directions to go. I pray that there be a solid way, truth, and life, that Jesus be lifted up, Father, in Nepal and in, in India. Of course, China, the the, the country, the great country of China, the Chinese there, that they have a revelation of Jesus, a revival like they had back in their, was it the 18th century or something? Lord, we pray for that as well. We pray for Russia and, and, and uh, Lord, the, 
the things that are happening, even though we, we know about them in the future and, and, and later on. But right now, give them the window of opportunity to receive you, Lord, and have revival in that country. If anything, they're more free than we are. But Lord, I pray that this revival come through. Uh, ministers in Cuba, Father, the families, we pray that there be conviction come upon that nation, upon the leaders that turn from their ways, that they receive you, Lord, that there be open gospels to be open meetings of the bible father and signs and wonders of fall the word because that's the promise we have that's the hope we have these signs these signs will fall them that believe and that's what we believe we believe in you lord so for cam the u.s lord we're tired of hearing this religious gospel if i can i shouldn't even use that word this religious doctrine and we want the freedom of christ in our lives so i pray that people's eyes open and they see the light of christ in their hearts father prepare us for the times that are ahead but lord the light shines brighter as the darkness tries to get in let us be more brighter in these coming days i pray this in jesus name thank you father amen and father we do pray for revival in america revival in canada and in the nations of the world father god as we lift up these nations around the world we thank you that uh, in every one of these places you have a remnant you have a church that is shining with the light of the gospel of jesus christ and father i pray that you would embolden your church in ukraine in nepal yes, in okay. china father we've received a prayer request from china um, uh, earlier today father we pray for the church in china who is coming under heavier and heavier restriction lord we understand that christian media is being shut down and restricted heavily but in the name of jesus christ uh, we release you holy spirit to move and operate and to upset the apple cart if necessary yes. and cause uh, re um, revival to come to that nation as ever before as never before and Father, we pray that uh, you would encourage and embolden and protect your servants in that nation and your people, as well as in places like Afghanistan, yes, Iran, Lord, and Afghanistan. Cuba, and other nations of the world. Father God, we speak blessing and we speak revival over nations like Argentina and yes. Brazil, who had experienced great revivals. But Lord, they need another fresh move of God. So Lord God, move upon those nations. And Father, I sense that many have fallen into fear, and so I come against and I bind mm -hmm. the spirit of fear, for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And so, Father, we speak blessing, we speak strength to your church and wisdom, and Lord God, bold us in this hour to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for Canada. We pray that you would put a shield of protection over that nation. Lord, we pray that the leaders of that nation would bow their knees before you and seek your guidance and your direction and your blessing for the nation of Canada, as well as uh, the same we pray here in America. Revive this nation. We declare that Canada shall be saved. We declare that America shall be saved. Mexico shall be saved. And Lord God, Argentina shall be saved and Paraguay and and Uruguay and Peru and Bolivia and Argentina and Chile and Ecuador and Colombia and Venezuela, all the nations of the Caribbean, the Central American nations of Honduras, Panama, Costa Rica, Lord uh, Guatemala, uh, Nicaragua, Father, in the name of Jesus, even Belize, move by your spirit in these nations, move in the nations of the Caribbean, uh, Bahamas, Cuba, um, in uh, the uh, Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, but Lord, we pray that you would once again move in a mighty way in that island and use that mm -hmm. island to propagate the gospel to other nations of the world. Father, we lift up Ukraine, and Lord, we know that yes, there are many who are concerned and some in fear yes, over a potential event invasion, and we speak peace into that situation. We pray yes, that you would place a shield of protection around that nation, and we pray for the church 
that you would use them in this hour and lord that they would um, uh, use this opportunity to evangelize even more people in jesus name in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. And Lord God, mm -hmm. I pray against the spirit of fear that has befallen so many around the world because yes, of uh, the different uh, uh, virus uh, yeah. uh, type, uh, virus types and mm -hmm. uh, variants. But in the name of Jesus, we know uh, and declare that Jesus Christ is over everything every name that is named whether it be a person or a sickness in the name of jesus we speak uh, healing and mm -hmm. faith and boldness into the body mm -hmm. of jesus christ mm -hmm. And we uh, we arrest that virus and the fear that Perfect. has befallen many people. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. And we pray, oh God, uh, for clarity of spirit, mind, Absolutely. soul, and body. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I agree Amen. with that. The clarity of mind, that's the hope we have. Amen. The, the, the Something we can hang our faith on. The clarity. Yes, the Ukraine and what's happening over there. Uh, you know, when you know it's I'm blessed when I watch your recordings because I can't name all the countries and you're just blah, 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 and I can think I remember that one I know that one but Lord you know where the people are and the people are listening yes maybe like Bolivia we we you know, we missed that one or we missed uh, somewhere in in uh, South America or South Africa Lord we pray for these people because Father God you're the one who know the people Amen. you listen to heart so yeah forgive us if we screw up and it, it's uh yeah I need a map here maybe one of these days we'll go on yeah. just pinpoint but yeah there's small countries azerbaijan afghanistan i was just watching what's happening there lord the people there we pray that there be a, a, a conviction come in those hearts yeah they're religious they're 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 following a wrong god we follow the true lord and savior jesus and amen. he's a merciful god amen. so receive into your heart be a light amen. and uh yeah persecution will come but that's the blessing if i can say it that way because it spreads more even further because there is something to live and to die for and that is the gospel of christ well, if i can leave you uh, with this uh, philippian oh sorry can i go uh, i was just going to say we want to also include the african continent we didn't yes. mention the african nations of kenya yes. uganda yes. nigeria ivory coast and ghana yes. and lord uh, uh, south africa and rwanda mm -hmm. malawi uh, mm -hmm. ethiopia uh, tanzania and lord uh, northern africa mm -hmm. and lord the middle east and particularly israel, israel. we pray for peace the of peace of jerusalem mm -hmm. and for the salvation of your nation the salvation of your people and lord god uh, we pray that your power uh, would manifest mightily amongst those that, who are believers uh, in Israel and use them to evangelize their nation and other nations of the world. Yes, and Father, we do pray for the African continent that yes, you Father. would once again move mightily throughout that continent, throughout Asia and throughout uh, South and Central America. And we may not have mentioned Venezuela, but Venezuela, move yeah. there, we, we yeah. pray in jesus name amen that's the, amen, the, amen and you were going to leave us with a, a scripture right scripture yeah. there if that's okay yeah like say even like the christmas island easter island and all these little islands around there god knows where you're at so forget if we miss those but that's the faith you have the hope the faith the love all that is that god knows where you're at i don't but god does and that's the hope amen. we have so i want to uh, share the the verse that um uh, like we just prayed now, that was actually the prayer that uh, Brother Walter was saying, and I've been saying that this veil, that's the word I was looking for, scales, veil, come off the eyes. You know, when Jesus was on the cross and when he, when he died on the cross, the, the veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, so it's not a human hand that could do that, to show us the, the true way, the true life, and the, true, uh, the way, the truth, the life. And that's through Jesus. So that's why we say receive Jesus, because then you know which way to go. You know the light you have, and you know all these things on here. So Ephesians 1.8, uh, actually two verse, Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the eyes of your heart, this your, your soul, your person, be enlightened in order that you may know the hope, you know, is that hope we're again, that he's called you, because God is calling you right now. Like, don't, don't dismiss this as a little you know another thing god is calling you. he's talking to you right now i wish i could say you know steve and frank and isabel or whatever but you know i'm not there yet i'm eventually i might and that, that'll be like because oh, that i never had anybody say tom and i thought well okay cool but uh, the thing is god knows your heart because you know in your heart god's talking to you so don't resist it it's it's 
It's a lot, if I could say it's better on this side than to be against God, but to give us the hope that he's called us to, and like Ephesians 1.18, the riches is glory inheritance, the freedom, the things that we can pray for, the healings, all that, the deliverance, and the sound mind. Boy, that's a that's a one right there you can't buy uh, in this holy people. And then Philippians 1.16, um, being confident of this, that he that began a good work in you will carry it into completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That's the hope I have. So you want to know what hope I have? That Jesus is going to work and he's going to make it ready for me. Because I'm looking at myself, like, I still got a long way to go. You know, like I, I watched Brother Walter and Tony, you know, there's other ones, Albert on there. And I thought, man, I'm alive. How can you do this in front of all these people? And it's so easy to be behind the camera, but now in front of the camera, you got to be what you're saying you are, right? And that's the hope I have that God will make me ready when he returns. And that's the hope you have for you. So that's a Philippians 1, 6. If you need to mark it down, say, that's for me, that is for you. Because that's why I say God does that. So be confident we have that hope. In Jesus' Amen. name, I pray a his blessing. Go ahead. Sorry, brother. Amen. Thank you, brother Tom. And uh, we want to thank all of you that have tuned in. Share this broadcast. And uh, this is a way that you can uh, share the gospel with other people. Maybe you're shy. Maybe you don't know where to start. Just Invite them to watch this broadcast and that'll open the conversation for you to tell your friends more about Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brother Tom. God bless you, Sister I'm going to go hide behind the camera now. God bless Canada. Uh, Amen. We declare that Canada shall be saved. Amen. And uh, remember, folks, Jesus Christ is the same Amen. yesterday. Amen. Today and forever, God richly bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.